thank you for the great in introduction. Uh, I am JK from SSW and today what we're going to go through is how can you just get some data? In my case, I just got from my bank some bank transactions and get some actionable data. And why this is so amazing, uh, especially if you're today using ChatGPT and some other tools that you can use with ChatGPT. So, as, uh, as I mentioned, I'm SSW Solution Architect. I'm also an AI MVP. Um, there's a lot of socials. If you want to follow me, uh, I host a global AI, uh, the podcast. And with Octium, we are also organizing a uh, AI uh, law hackathon. So that's going to be really awesome. If you're interested in AI, uh, I do, uh, do hope that you'll join. But I'm mostly a solution architect when I do my day job. So I'm specialized in doing, uh, building solutions in .NET and EF Core. And my, all of the AI stuff until 2020 was basically just for fun. Um, and now I'm starting to apply all of that more into businesses. But my passion is to try to show people how to use AI. It, it might be in their businesses, might be in their uh, work life, it might be maybe in their hobbies. That's the biggest passion I have. And the talk that I'm doing is basically trying to get you use AI and understand roughly what's happening behind the scenes. It's going to be a little bit technical, but um, at the end, it's going to be worth it. So first off, I'm going to give you just a little story uh, of how I started uh, with AI. Uh, you don't have to worry about the ML.NET. The talk was originally made for developers, but I modified it uh, to be a little bit more uh, business oriented. And later on, we're going to, I'm going to just show you a little bit about machine learning, simplify it. Does anyone not know what ChatGPT is? Has anyone not yet used it? Okay, we'll just go uh, show you some nice things that you can use in ChatGPT. And lastly, how can you use your own data with ChatGPT? Because some of you might not know that you can actually import data into ChatGPT and use it um, to get some insight in your data. All right, so the way I started, like about 2004, was with a very simple question uh, when I was in middle school, funnily enough, with a very simple problem that I seem to be fixing for the last 20 years. How to get from bank transactions, the name of it, into something I can use, like categories, because I wanted to know where the money goes and I wanted to save money. And the thing is, when I was in middle school, I used Excel. I was, you know, happy to have a computer and I was just like, I'll just use Excel. And until I think high in the middle of high school, that's what I did. I learned a couple of, when I used this for a couple of years, it's a lot of work. You missed a week or two and everything breaks apart. So it's a, a daily thing you need to do. And as you get older, there are a lot more transactions that you have to classify. Uh, that's what I haven't considered when I was doing that. But you know, in the university, I learned to uh, code in C Sharp, which was way easier than C++. And I was like, I can do some uh, decision engines on my own. They're pretty hard to make for problems like that. <laughs> but then I realized, hey, this is kind of similar to machine learning. So I was looking at machine learning and tried to see, can that fix my problem? And the answer is yes, but it's kind of a rabbit hole, especially before 2018, 2019. It was really hard to learn machine learning. And the reason for it wasn't because machine learning on its own was hard. 
It's because when you started learning machine learning, it was a basically a rabbit hole of a rabbit hole of a rabbit hole, and you don't even know if you hit the last rabbit hole. Uh, and in the end, you spend two months and you're nowhere closer to be able to classify your bank transactions because you realize that you have learned how to predict house prices, which is different from the classification. And now you need to spend two months figuring out how that works. But it took me two months to figure out that that thing is wrong. <laughs> So what happened was, yeah, in about 2014, I was just like, okay, machine learning isn't for me. Uh, and that kind of was about until 2018. Until then, I used AI mostly as cognitive services, trying to figure out how to do a build AI workflows, like facial recognition when you come in front of a desk, how it can show you custom data for you. But in 2018, things started to change. We're getting new frameworks, like for instance, ML.NET, and later TensorFlow became much, much simpler to use. And it's because a lot of these technologies started to notice that, hey, even the developers are quite skilled with math and stuff, they don't really have time to learn machine learning. And that changed everything uh, since then, because now even as a developer, I can show a basic flow of how, machine, uh, how you can do machine learning. And I can just say, you know, you have this uh, wizard here and you just figure out which of these scenarios is the closest to what you want to solve. You pick that one, then you put your file in or your connection string to your database. Uh, you mess with the, uh, with the columns a little bit. You select which one you want to predict. You train it and then hope for the best. If your data is good, you, it might be really good to see uh, if you can already use it as a prototype and see if you can evolve it uh, in the future. You're probably going to need a data scientist and you're probably going to need someone who is specialized in machine learning, but this in one day, you can figure out whether you even can do the thing. And in some cases, I've seen that they spent one hour with this, and it just worked perfectly fine. They trialed it for one month, and then shipped it to production. And this actually is good enough also to do bank transactions. You just, um, when we are here, you just use the classification, the first one over there, uh, you select the columns, you train it, and with a little bit of coding, you can use it in your own solution, which is awesome. I'm going to show you, I'm going, uh, this is to show you how we were doing as developers. And I'm going to a little bit show you also how the machine learning works on a very bird eyes view because then I want to show you how everything has changed since ChatGPT. Now, what is machine learning? How many of you understand roughly what machine learning is? Okay, we have maybe 15%, couple of hands up. Okay, so what machine learning is, in essence, Imagine that you have business requirements or you have a, a spec for how something should work and you have the inputs for that. That's the, the left side, the rules and the data. Then we write code based on those rules and data and the end result of that is an answer. Imagine that we have an input form for insurance, you put in data and the end result is does the person get the insurance or not? But with machine learning, it's a little bit different. We still have the data, the inputs to the form, but then we have all of the answers for those inputs. And what machine learning does, it tries to figure out rules for, uh, for all of the data and the answers that we got in. So the roles are a bit different, uh, are swapped, so we no longer are trying to figure out how to code to follow the rules. 
we're not just trying to figure out what data do we need for the machine to figure out the rules. And to explain this with a uh, quite famous game, Rock, Paper, Scissor. Does anyone not know what Rock, Paper, Scissor is? OK, everyone knows. So in classical programming, if we want to figure out uh, if somebody won, we just say, if the opponent did rock, then the, uh, the, you have to throw paper to win. If it's paper, then scissor. If scissors, then rock. That is a simple way of how to do this programmatically. So you write a code for this, and it will work. Now, in machine learning, the way you would do this is you open up an Excel, and you do the same thing, but now you do it as an Excel sheet. And then you put it into machine learning, and then it learns from the data that we put it from the Excel sheet what, uh, what are the rules. Now, where this gets a little bit more powerful is when you uh, go for rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock. Now, you can try to program in this, and it's not too difficult. But imagine that we keep adding more and more combinations. What if we add cats and dogs, and we add cars, and we add a bunch of other things, right? If we write this programmatically, it becomes very unwieldy to basically write this. But for machine learning, we just add more rows to it, more combinations, and that's it. We get all of the answers. Now, if we translate that to the bank transactions, all we have to do, essentially, is we put the transaction name and the category that we're trying to predict. And that, uh, from all of this, the machine learning is going to try to learn, OK, if I have American concept, most people wouldn't know that's a coffee shop, then make it as coffee. Right? If we have big W, I usually ho uh, buy there for home improvement stuff. I have category for uh, home. But the trick here is that if I uh, manage to pay it with PayPal, for instance, online, there's a thing that is over there in front. Right? And that is the thing that usually breaks uh, custom rule engines. Uh, and also there's a random number that is constantly changing and you know you need to then learn all of that for every single transaction uh, if you try to do it yourself but machine learning it tries to figure this uh, all of these rules on its own and how many of you understand how machine learning actually improves over time any hands okay we have maybe two hands. So the way this works is we have training data. What you've seen before is essentially training data. And what we do, we put this into a machine learning training algorithm. That looks at the data and tries to then figure out the, uh, the rules. We have a few extra things if you go try to make it really good, but for purposes of just seeing from the bird's eye, not too important. What we get as an end result is a model. That could be a zip file, it could be various different things, but that's the thing that we then deploy to, say, mobile devices, to web, to IoT devices, and this is where it, we have the rules stored, where the, now the device can look at it, see the input, run against these rules and get a response back. But this is where the story doesn't end, because machine learning might actually get wrong sometimes. And the user say, hey, this is wrong. It should be this. Or we collect some new data. Like if you have an IoT device, uh, it may now run in an environment that it wasn't familiar before and it has new information about the environment. So it can now send back that information. We can then use that to improve our data and then use that to improve our training data. And now it's a cycle. Now we go back, we, train the, we retrain the training data, we get a model, we deploy it to our devices, and the cycle continues. That is, from the bird's eye view, 
machine learning. Now with ChatGPT, things have changed because a lot of things that we used machine learning before, now you can just use uh, ChatGPT and you don't have to retrain all the time with lots of different data. You can just say to ChatGPT, hey, can you do, uh, instead of using coffee, can you do a uh, restaurant, for instance, for a specific transaction? And it will be like, sure thing. And you don't have to retrain or deploy any models or stuff like that. You just tell ChatGPT to do so. So, all right. For very few people who still don't know what ChatGPT is, based on the response from ChatGPT, um, you can re read here, but in short, it's a chatbot, predominantly, where you can prompt it uh, to a question and it can give you an answer. You can also use it directly to use it in your application to have a more hyper-focused way of uh, asking and uh, answering the questions about, for instance, what the bank transaction could be or what actions should, uh, should the application do for a user. But most people know, uh, know it from using from the UI. And what this allows you to do is, for instance, rock, paper, scissors, uh, uh, lizard, spark. I didn't need to explain what this game is. ChatGPT just knows about it. And I just give it instructions on, hey, this is how I'm going to interact with you. And this is the game I'm playing with you. Give me the winning combination. And when I said Spock, it answered uh, paper. When I get, gave Lizard, it said rock. And that's correct. And the amazing thing here is there's no machine learning involved. I didn't need to tell ChatGPT what this is. It just worked. And where this starts to get powerful is, what if I can just put bank transactions uh, names into it? Can it figure out what category should it be? And it turns out that, yeah. For instance, here I have uh, George Bar Bistro. It knows that it's either restaurant or dining. In fact, I could make this uh, prompt a little bit bigger and I could specify what categories. Uh, it should pick from, and it would pick from those categories. I didn't specify here anything, and I'm already getting some valuable information. I can put a French, uh, this is a French restaurant, but if you don't know French, you might not know it, and it knows that it's a restaurant. I have here Hoyt's, which is a event cinema, uh, and it knows. And here I have Gustilna, Prosnik, Omoj, and can anyone guess what that is? It's a Slovenian restaurant, and it knows about it. So it understands, even if it's in a foreign language, uh, it understands what that is. Now, this is a bit boring to uh, ask it one thing after another. So what I did is I basically exported some of the data from uh, Excel and just put it into uh, the prompt and ask it, hey, can you just fill out the categories in this list? And it did. And it did a really good job at doing that. There's a couple of more complex ones. Uh, one that was, for instance, the, um, the, for instance, the spy reality, although I did made a hint for that. Um, I have tested this for quite a lot of things, and it got it right. There's a couple of things that it got it wrong, but you can actually say before you uh, do the, uh, finish the prompt to say, this transaction is that category. And you can basically list all of the things that it got it wrong in the past, and it will correct itself. Now, the more complex that you do the uh, prompt, if you're using ChatGPT uh, 3.5, you might find that it doesn't get it right all the time. So you, you, for some, you'll have to use ChatGPT4. Uh, it's just the amount of reasoning that it can do with ChatGPT4 is a lot better. It can also follow instructions a lot better. Also, you, some of you might ask, especially because some of you 
How many of you have already done tax return? Yeah, uh, uh, this year. Uh, for yeah, I finished my tax returns. <laughs> uh, and you would say, well, ChatGPT can't do it, your tax returns. Well, it kind of do. And here's the problem that I actually used. Now, disclaimer, you probably shouldn't do this on a public ChatGPT pushing your uh, transactions. I understood which transaction I put into ChatGPT and I was like, even if it ever gets le uh, leaked and says, these are JK's transactions, I'll be like, yeah, that's fine. I actually use some of these data as demos. So yeah, nothing there to see. But the thing is, there were over a thousand transactions. Um, and it and the way I done this is I watched Netflix and I just copied transaction into ChatGPT, ran it, and then copied the response and then put it into separate file. And later I basically copied that response uh, into ChatGPT and tried to make a summary out of that. And I did this lazily while watching Netflix. Um, and the thing is, it actually found a few transactions that I missed to tax. So it saved me about $200. So yeah, uh, and at the end I was able to make a, a little graph over here. Uh, it got a few things wrong, um, but I think this was done in March, or was it April? Yeah, I think it was March when the ChatGPT4 got released. This was like the first thing that I did uh, the day it was released. Let's see, can it do this? Because ChatGPT 3.5 wasn't able to, and it was able to. It was really awesome. And yeah, the previous year, well, the year prior to that, I finished it in April. This one, I finished it last week. So uh, now I'm much more efficient with the tax returns. But also one more note before I uh, continue. There are a lot of solutions nowadays that you can now use internally. So Microsoft is going to give a couple of options. Uh, I believe the ChatGPT, you can now run it within uh, your organization. Uh, we haven't had the access to, it, uh, to that yet. But once you have that, just double check that the data doesn't actually leak. Uh, and make sure that you actually use based on your company's policies. And this might be safe to use. But as I said, make sure that you uh, know where the data goes and how the, the prompts that you do impact um, your um, chat GPT. Yes? That's exactly what my question was going to relate to. Is uh, if I was to put together, say, a uh, computer vision for the Yeah, can, can we do the question uh, at the end? Oh, okay. Yeah. The answer will likely be there's a lot of solutions nowadays that do exactly what you're saying. It's about yeah. Leakage, though, so yeah. Okay. Private, a uh, private, four minutes. four minutes. Okay, I need to power through. So we have the pros is we can use natural language, we can interact with it, no coding skill, uh, and it seems like it can solve almost everything. But the thing is, you can almost, uh, it feels like you can solve almost everything without building your own machine learning uh, models, which is really, really big. But it's also very limited because it works from a general knowledge. It has dependence in the internet, it can be slow, hallucinations, uh, there's a very limited amount of data that you can put in, and privacy. You have to be very careful what you put on ChatGPT. I always double check what I'm sending. So how can you use your own data? Well, we used to have ChatGPT4 browse feature. Um, by the way, ChatGPT4 uh, and all of the stuff that I'm going to talk about now, you need to have ChatGPT+. You can just download the file that you want and you can operate directly against that downloaded file. Currently it's disabled, so I cannot show you the screenshot. 
It's been disabled for a couple of months now and it might be disabled for a few weeks or even months. There's no timeline for that. Another is ChatGPT4 Code Interpreter, which is similar to Browse, but it allows to run some code behind the scenes. It's really good, but it's a bit harder to use. Uh, and when you select it, you have the option to upload your file directly. And there's ChatGPT plugins. This is very interesting because what you can do, instead of you uploading to, uh, data to ChatGPT, you can find an organization that can do the machine learning and insights on the data um, and serve it, uh, save it securely and use that instead through ChatGPT. And what this one does is when I uploaded my data, I said just, I want to predict category. And it just gave me like seven things that I should be doing with this data because it said, uh, in short, your data is terrible. This is the things you need to do. <laughs> and I inquire a little bit, okay, uh, why is it bad? And then at some point it says, would you like to proceed with these steps? And I was like, yeah. And you know, it just fixed up a few things. Now, if anyone knows data science, this is not as trivial uh, to do, like figuring out that you need to do that. Plus it figured out that my machine learning models didn't work after a certain point because there was a raw character in uh, line 4000 that I didn't know and none of the machine learning algorithms warned me about it. This one did. <laughs> And you know, you could also say, can you create a graph based on categories? And it does. So it seems like I spent most of my um, money on food. Uh, but you know what? I was like, you know, my favorite coffee shop is this one. How much do I spend on this? It's like, okay, that's a bit much, but you know, I also take breakfast with it. What if I exclude breakfast? How hard do you think it would be for me to do a query to figure out how much would I save if I uh, would remove breakfast? Do you think it's easy? Is it hard? How many of you think it's hard? We have one hand, although I did allude you that it might be easy. So how much w uh, would I save if I uh, would only spend $5.5, which is the cost of the coffee, on transaction that contains that? It's not yet quite smart where I could just say, uh, that coffee shop I need to do contains, and costs more than $6, because coffee costs 5.5, so anything that costs more, I obviously took breakfast with it. And he took, uh, in, told me that I would save $200. Now, if you try to do this with Excel, you could probably do it, but you would spend probably an hour trying to figure out how to do this. With this, it's just like, hey, I'll just type this in and see what happens. And basically, this is the power of insights. I've uh, noticed that I had only 30 minutes, so I had to shrink my presentation a lot. Uh, but I hope that this gives you an insight of how um, trying to figure out what to do with the data or try to understand your data will change in the future, especially once the privacy is no longer going to be a concern. Once that is gone, a lot of things are going to happen. Thank you Mm. Once I've created that model, uh, that's effectively the value, that's where the IP sits, right? If then we're using ChatGPT4 via the APIs to create, say, a simple chatbot to say, give me a special condition in a real estate contract for, so the buyer gets the interest from the deposit. Let's just say something like that. You put that into your prompt, it uses my model to determine what the special condition should be and spits it out. How much of that language model is transmitted to ChatGDP and how much of it is persisted on ChatGDP, therefore leaking my IP and reducing its value over time as questions are asked on the machine. 
so to shorten the question is if you uh, built your own um, essentially retrain uh, chat GPT for instance with your own data how much data would leak out to chat GPT uh, the answer to that is it's hard to figure th that uh, part out you, <laughs> yeah um, this is why it's a little bit like you can use it but try to avoid using it with your sensitive information or anything that you don't want to be public. Uh, but Microsoft is working uh, for getting ChatGPT into the companies and have that data isolated. Uh, I'm not sure if it, it's probably they're not going to allow you to run on your own hardware, so you'll still be uh, needing to connect to their cloud. Um, but the important part is that your data is isolated. But another thing to consider is we're getting more and more offline versions of uh, ChatGPT-like solutions, and some of them can even run on your phone. Now, they're not that... <laughs> Do you mean like the Akita chips and stuff from, from Brain Chip and that kind of stuff? They're actually um, software solutions. Oh, okay. So you can just run it as a regular software. There's some apps that actually run them behind the scenes. But you know, simple uh, questions might take two minutes on your phone to be answered. Thanks, JK. Maybe you could continue. Yeah. When JK introduced himself, he said, "Very quick, I'm an MVP, <laughs> Microsoft Most Valuable Professional." This is a global superstar here. When he puts suggestions into Microsoft AI, they make changes. So we're looking to work with SSW on a special AI from Law Hackathon coming up. So looking forward to that. Yeah. Thanks.